Welcome back. It is four in the morning and I wish I was still asleep, but we need to head to the airport. My team and I were invited to one of the most futuristic hot pot restaurants in the world called Xpot. So in about 30 minutes, we are hopping on a plane to Las Vegas. We just arrived in Vegas. We're waiting for Zach to land. He should be arriving around 10 minutes. We're gonna go meet him at his gate. Christina's getting really annoyed because I'm, I'm making kind of a scene in public right now. I'm pretty sure this is one of the only airports you can actually gamble while you wait for your flight. You can see all the machines in the background. There's cameraman Zach. How was the flight? The news her. All right, let's go. We just got to the Aria Hotel and dropped off all our stuff. We're exhausted, however, we're gonna do one activity before we call it, and that's to check out the Las Vegas Sphere. It's supposed to be incredible. Upon arriving at the Sphere, we were immediately impressed by the inside's super futuristic look and feel. There were hologram-like displays hanging from the ceiling, AI robots you could talk to, and impressive LED lighting everywhere you looked. We then made our way up to our seats a couple stories above the lobby. As we entered the main auditorium, you really got to appreciate just how big the space was. We also could not believe how steep the stairs were. It really felt like you could easily fall with one wrong step. As the show started, a video of Earth slowly filled the entire screen. This hands down was the most immersive viewing experience I've ever had. The Sphere was an amazing experience and honestly kind of puts IMAX to shame. I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm exhausted, so I'm going to bed, but I'll see you tomorrow. To start our day, we hopped in an Uber and headed to Blueberry Hill for some breakfast. The menu at this place had an overwhelming amount of options. I got some fluffy blueberry pancakes and a huge cup of mocha iced coffee. Christina got some coconut chicken and waffles, and cameraman Zach got chicken and gravy with a huge side of buttermilk pancakes. After eating way more than we should have, we headed to our first activity of the day. So this is Area 15, and there's a bunch of cool stuff inside. I'm not sure what. Let's go check it out. So now we are in Omega Mart. This is basically an interactive museum kind of thing. It's a room by room experience and every room is super different, but I have no idea what the rest of the rooms are. This first room is grocery themed, but it has a little bit of a twist. If you look closely, everything has this distorted look and some of the products are just super weird. Obviously this isn't normal. We have, mammoth chunks. Mammoth. we have some dehydrated water. We have some funky sodas. We got some hammer soda. Okay, that's pretty normal, but it's vape juice. It's root beer. Now we're in the cleaning section of this grocery store. We have some plausible deniability. We got some rainbow wash. I might have to pick some of this up. It looks like Christina found something she likes. What is this? It's an avocado bag. You got an avocado bag. The coolest thing about this grocery store is these aren't just cool props. You can buy everything in here that you can pull off the shelf. These are pretty cool too. We got ramen notes. It's a complete notepad inside here. No ramen noodles. And a granola uprising. For anyone that's a Campbell soup fan, this is definitely a spin on that. But instead it's camel soup. And we even have a camel made out of the cans. We also have a super weird deli here. We got some eyeballs. Look at the cold cuts. We got, I think that's Mona Lisa? And Scream. I think I might have just found the coolest thing. Secret fridge. Yo, this is insane. This is another little tiny room. It's not very big, but there's a bunch of doors leading to other places. So let's check it out. Oh my God. What the heck is this? It's like an ocean kind of, but I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe this used to be a gas station. It says Alpha Service, gas, parts, and oil. But I don't see any cars or any place to fix your car, so it doesn't make much sense. This technology they're using in this room is called projection mapping, which allows them to put all these different kind of patterns on different surfaces. We're going into our next room. I think it's a dead end. So we're gonna have to turn around. <laughs> no, let's go out. I think oh, that's wait. actually, a, that's, a, that's a real exit. I feel like people definitely go through that though. Wait. I can't like there's that. a there's a legal exit sign that, so I don't want to set off the alarm. Okay, so these huge slides remind me exactly of those like huge indoor play pins that McDonald's would have growing up and going through them as a kid. Let's see if there's a way to go down this slide. I think there might be. Yeah. It's almost like a club. There's like some deep house playing in here. And all the walls are lighting up like crazy. As cool as this parallel universe is, we have to get the dinner at Xbox. Let's get going. We finally made it to Xbox, some of the best hot pot on the Vegas trip with some amazing technology and experiences embedded into the dining experience. Let's go check it out. The first thing we got to check out was our special private 5D dining room. We entered through a hidden door and got to play with all the cool technology inside it. The theme of the graphics are directly related to whatever dishes they are serving that night and can even be completely customized. And they even let me put some custom text on the wall. After seeing the 5D dining room, I walked over to the bar where they let me try a few signature drinks. The first drink was Valentine's Day themed, topped with ice and flash paper, which when lit on fire revealed a beautiful rose. The second drink was called the Kimuri X, 
poured on a perfectly clear ice sphere and garnished with orange and infused with wood smoke. The last sip I had was from a drink called X-Pot Hustle, infused with tea and chilled with dry ice. Now that I was thoroughly loosened up, it was time for dinner. Before we tried any food, X-Pot Robots carried three signature broths over to our table in a private room. We were given a chicken broth, which was boiled for 18 hours, a tomato, and a delicious lobster broth. After that, we were brought into the kitchen to see some of the high quality ingredients that X-Pot uses. We saw an entire tray of uni and different expensive cuts of Wagyu all imported from Japan. We were also told all the Wagyu we saw would be cut thinly for us to dip in the various broth flavors they gave us. We even got to see the prep of a couple dishes that would be sent out to us later in the night. The premium caviar tasting appetizer came out first. It came with a Chinese donut, which I topped with caviar and foie gras. Zach promised he would try everything even though he's a picky eater and even he liked it. I also had to try the caviar solo because how can you not? The next appetizer was the signature Wagyu tartare on tiny pieces of crunchy toast. Rami might seem scary, but at a place like this, it's very safe to eat and delicious. Such a savory bite. After that, I got to try the king crab cake, which had fluffy crab meat throughout and a fantastic crispy outer shell. We then got to try the Wagyu bone marrow bim bim bop. The bone marrow was scooped out sizzling table side right onto a warm bowl of their Wagyu fried rice. It was a savory flavor bomb and some of the best bim bim bop I've ever tasted. Then all the hot pot sides were brought out to our table. First was the Wagyu feast. A impressive cow statue was brought out that had areas to place an assortment of the chef's best selection of meats. It included everything from A5 Wagyu ribeye cap, stone axe chuck rolls, ribeye uni nigiri, ribeye and foie gras, short rib, and uni wraps. First, I tried all the meats for cooking in the broth. Everything just melted in my mouth and was full of flavor. Then I moved on to the premium seafood platter. It was fully packed with raw cuts of fresh fish and lobster. The fish cooked for around 30 seconds in the broth and had an incredibly flaky and soft texture. Out of nowhere, a staff member began what they called the noodle dance. He was hand stretching dough and giving us quite the performance at the same time. Once the dough was thin enough, he dropped it right into one of our bras to let it cook. It really doesn't get any more fresh than that. After all that food, I barely had room for anything else, but Xpot insisted on bringing out a couple desserts to close out the meal. I tried a multi-layer matcha cake, swan cakes, and even a passion fruit cake. After eating so much salty and savory food, having something sweet was the perfect contrast in flavor. We were in so much of a food coma after that meal, we completely forgot to film the outro. So this is the outro. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.